Good morning, everyone. So for those of you who don't already know me, my name is Elizabeth Brewster, and I am currently enrolled in an online speech class. The topic of my speech today will be on serial killers, and the purpose of my speech today is just to inform my audience in the process of what makes a serial killer a serial killer. So today we will be diving into three to three things. First thing we will be diving in is the background, meaning the childhood of the serial killer, he or she, how they were raised, what kind of household they grew up in. Um, we'll also be looking at early childhood signs um, to kind of just see if, if they're born or if they're made. The second thing that we'll be looking at is a brain disorder that most serial killers tend to have. We'll be looking at different types of personality disorders, what that means and how it affects them and how it affects their victims. Then last but not least, we will dive into the qualifications of a serial killer and um, what they need, what requirements they need to meet to be formally named a serial killer by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So first, I'm going to throw out a little statistic for you. Did you know that each and every one of you will walk by at least, at least six serial killers in your lifetime? Obviously, these serial killers have gotten away with murder since you're walking by them. So I thought it would be important to go ahead and learn the signs of a serial killer and just to learn more about them today. That way we can become more aware of our surroundings. Um, just a little bit about me and my background before we dive into this is I actually um, have studied serial killers for a for a couple of years now, I have taken both college classes in psychology and forensic science. I have always been heavily interested in serial killers. I find it their side of the brain kind of fascinating. Um, and I have been heavily interested since I want to say the start of my high school career. Um, I'm 23 and a sophomore in college now. So that gives you a little bit of a time frame about how long I've been studying this. Um, like I said, first, we will be talking about the statistics of their background, their childhood, how they were raised, and how that contributes to the killings. We'll be discussing the making of a serial killer, their brain disorders, and then what qualifies them to be a serial killer. So now, let's go ahead and dive in to their background, their childhood, how they were raised, what kind of household they grew up in, and the statistics of how that actually correlates to how they kill now and to what like the victims that they choose and that sort of thing. So there is actually high statistics that show that most serial killers were actually abused in some sort of fashion in their past. 42% um, of serial killers, of convicted serial killers, have a domestic abuse background, meaning they were physically abused as children, and 74% of serial killers suffered from psychological abuse. Also, as high as 45% of serial killers were sexually abused as well. Now, statistics show us that serial killers that were sexually abused when they were younger actually always tend to sexually harm their victims. So whenever, you know, the, um, police officers or detectives see a victim that's been sexually abused, multiple ones with the same pattern, and they know it's a serial killer, they can go ahead and most of the time assume that the serial killer had a horrific past and was sexually abused by either a parent, a friend, a mentor, a teacher, someone of that nature. So that actually helps them narrow down the list and find them sooner and bring them to justice. So the childhood signs of making a serial killer, I wanted to go ahead and dive into that just so we can have an idea of what to look for. Maybe you're a teacher, maybe you're a parent, um, maybe you know you want to just go ahead and know the signs just to be educated on this. Um, for young children, just to have this certain red flags is what they call it, um, into just something to look out for. So 
of serial killers actually wet their bed in their childhood um, an obscene amount of times. Not just like a toddler who wet their bed occasionally, but I mean, this child would repeatedly wet their bed up until like the fifth grade, like into a high age where maybe that's not really seen and that's just kind of rare um, for them to be doing that. So um, also, what they also said is also 70%, not only did they wet the bed, they were found to be torturing small animals like cats, um, dogs, gerbils, you name it. They tortured them for pleasure um, and it was never accidental. It was always on purpose. They also started fires. They had a problem with arsony is what was found in most young serial killers. Also, 40% of serial killers in their childhood showed no strong emotion except for anger and took pleasure in destroying things like the torturing of animals and setting fires. So um, they showed that the children lacked empathy and sympathy and just kind of didn't have any emotions. They didn't really care about a lot of things. They weren't really passionate about a lot of things. They mostly kept to themselves. The only thing that really stood out to studying this was their anger issues they just would lash out and and just get very angry and not know how to control it statistics actually show that most childhood trauma does have an effect in behavior in most serial killers so their trauma actually from their childhood they carry on to their adult life and it also shows, like I said earlier, statistics show that serial killers who had sexual abuse in their childhood actually completed sexual abuse acts towards their victims. There um, can also be many different signs of, of signs of a serial killer, just little red flags. Like we said earlier, it was wetting the bed, playing with fire, causing harm, anger issues. Um, the next few things that I would like to mention is also red flags is just witnessing violence um and having childhood trauma is a is a key part in what forms them to be violent and kind of angry when they grow up they usually have a family history of mental disorders and just personality disorders like schizophrenia and stuff like that also here's another big one and ted bundy actually quoted this quite a lot is that Ted, Ted Bundy, who is a famous serial killer who killed many, many women and was finally convicted and brought to trial. But he said that pornography actually was a key part in making him who he was and making him angry and violent and, and started causing these fantasies that he had. And actually, so once Ted Bundy really set that and set the bar for that, we actually started looking into other serial killers as well. And it turns out that most of them said that. Most of them have said that pornography was a key role into making them violent, into making them who they ended up being and, and harming people. So after divulging into the backgrounds in the childhood and kind of the red flags of serial killers, let's go ahead and dive into the statistics of mental disorders that most serial killers have. So um, the top mental disorders in serial killers that you'll find, number one, as I was studying this, um, is usually the term of a psychopath. I know that you know, we kind of throw that word around a lot, um, a psychopath, but I just wanted to give you a quick definition. So a psychopath is actually a person that has an antisocial personality and severe lack of remorse for one's pain and suffering and anguish. Um, psychopaths is actually quite different from a sociopath. I know we hear those two words a lot, so I kind of just wanted to break that down for you guys. So a psychopath is actually they can be known as charming and deceptive and kind of manipulative and just kind of um you know charming that they can just talk themselves into anything and talk themselves out of anything and just kind of convince you of anything they're very convincing a sociopath um actually also has an antisocial personality disorder but the difference between this and a psychopath is that a sociopath results in the unstableness of a person. 
So someone who lacks empathy, someone who is impulsive, they are they always seem to be out of control. You know, they always burst out into anger and burst out into violence. And so those are the difference between a psychopath and a sociopath. The third um, mental disorder that most serial killers tend to have is actually called a personality disorder. A personality disorder is a type of mental disorder in which you have a rigid and unhealthy pattern of thinking. Um, functioning and behaving is just out the window. You know, it's uncontrollable. A person with a personality disorder has a trouble perceiving and relating to situations and people. Um, so what basically that means is that they are not all there up here. They cannot do everyday jobs that, you know, regular people can do. They have more trouble perceiving reality. Um, they tend to get lost more in their fantasies than anything else. Um, the last but not least mental disorder that I would like to talk about is schizophrenia. This was found in Ed Jin. He was also a famous serial killer. A little bit of this was found in the Oklahoma Strangler. And so schizophrenia is actually a serious mental disorder in which people interpret reali reality abnormally. So schizophrenia may result in a combination of heavy hallucinations, delusions, and extremely disordered thinking and behavior that impairs daily functioning. And schizophrenia can be disabling. And so people that have it, this is a struggle every day. They usually have to take medicine. They usually have to be watched um, by doctors and and people like that. So I just wanted to also um, give, go ahead and talk about examples of serial killers and how that correlates with mental disorders and just kind of dive into famous serial killers that we probably know about that had certain mental disorders. So David Berwatskitz was a famous serial killer who took the lives of six people. Um, and I believe this was in Oklahoma after he took the lives of the six people. He, was, he claimed, he told police officers claiming that his neighbor's dog actually told him to do it. He later was actually diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Another example is Edward Jinn was a famous serial killer who actually mutilated most of his victims. He was also diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, another last serial killer, um, we probably already know him. His name was Jeffrey Dahmer. He was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. I know we just talked about some of those. So that's kind of an example of famous serial killers and most of the mental disorders that they had. So last but not least, my last point um, as I start to wrap up is just the qualifications of a serial killer and what makes a serial killer a serial killer according to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So according to the FBI, a serial killer is someone who commits at least three murders over more than a month with an emotional cooling off period in between. So usually if you just murder one person or even two people, that is, you can be um, known as a spree killer or just a murderer. But if it has to be three or more and it has to be over a certain period of time with at least an emotional cooling off period and then they start back up again, that is what defines them as serial killers. So now that we kind of dove into their background and then their mental disorders, and now we, we understand the qualifications of a serial killer, now we are more aware and we know what to look for. Um, and now we all understand and have this knowledge of the signs and just of what makes a serial killer a serial killer. So as I come to the close, we talked about the background of a serial killer and their childhood. We saw the correlations and the cause and effects of childhood trauma in the link towards their crimes. Um, like we said earlier, usually serial killers who had sexual abuse in their childhood did bring that over to the victims that they um, sexually abused. Next, we talked about the different types of mental disorders in the most popular serial killers and what kind of that looks like. We went over the definitions of each, so just so we could have an idea. 
And then we went over the definition and the qualifications of what actually makes a serial killer a serial killer. So in conclusion, you know, like I said earlier, the purpose of this was just to, I wanted to go ahead and be able to inform my audience, which I hope I did a great job, the process of what makes a serial killer a serial killer, back to these three things, and then um, we can go home. <laughs> the making of a serial killer is actually the background, you know, the childhood, how they were raised, um, the home that they were raised in, the background, the, a brain disorder most of the time. We looked at schizophrenia, personality disorder, um, stuff like that. And then last but not least, we looked at the qualifications of what makes a serial killer a serial killer. Thank you for coming to my house on a Sunday and listening to my speech. I really appreciate it. I hope that this was informative and I hope we all got something out of it.